I'm getting ready to review a brand new bone saw that I got from Vivor. If you're an outdoorsman, love to deer hunt, but better yet, you like to process your own meat without having to pay a butcher, then you might be interested in this video. Stay tuned. So here it is, and I have it sitting on one of my stainless steel tables, and it's really too tall because of this table. This table has wheels on it. I think I'm going to look for a stainless table, even if I have to cut the legs down. But this right here really needs to be down here. But it's good enough to do this review with. I'll be able to manage the way it is. All right, so this is it. It's all stainless steel. Like I said, it's made by Vivor. And uh, you can turn it on. Turn it off. Now I have it opened up, <clears throat> as you can see here, this is your two pulleys for your, your blade and it does come with six blades. And the length of the blade is on here. You can order them from Vivor, but if you've got a better source and you can order them, the length is 1650 millimeters. And um, it's a bandsaw, it's a meat saw, a bone saw, whatever you want to call it. But also you got a guide right here if you look right here, you got a wing nut and you got a knob and you just loosen that up and you can slide this where you want it. They have a scale here that's in millimeters and you know, I do use metric on some things, but I got to tape measure. I'll just tape and measure what I need. Right now it's set at three quarters of an inch and I'll show you why here momentarily. Now, if you've ever used a bone saw, then you know that you get bone fragments and little bits of meat everywhere. But they have a little tray in here that's designed to catch a lot of that. And it's got magnets right here. You can feel it suck down when you throw it in there. Just push that in. So after every use, you will want to clean this out, wipe any kind of fragments out or whatever. The very top knob here at the very top, if you need to replace this, that's where you loosen tension. That would lower this down to where you could easily replace this blade. I mean, it just pops right out. Pop the new one in, tighten it down, you're good to go. But this door is meant to stay closed. I just had it open long enough to show you the inside. Lock that one down. And we lock that one down, just that easy. So we got this slide right here with these rollers. And that's just to kind of help hold everything where it needs to be, but you do have to adjust it up depending on what you're cutting. I'm getting ready to do a pork butt just to demonstrate how this works. Going to cut some blade steaks out of it. So I will probably have to, I'll have to bring it out here, but I'll probably end up somewhere right in here with it. We're just going to lock it in there for the time being. Seems to be very well built. And that's what you would pull to adjust this slide again. You loosen it here and then you pull it where you want it at here. That's basically it in a nutshell. I'm gonna go ahead and get the meat ready and we're gonna demonstrate this. All right, so I'm liking that so far. Let's go ahead and do some more. three quarters of an inch. I don't know if you caught my video I did about a month ago, but the ones that I bought and paid for, they were right at, they were right at uh, a half inch. So I got another quarter inch. And that's the cool part about it. You can buy a whole ribeye and cut two, two inch steaks if you want them, two and a half, inch and a half, whatever you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a few more of these cut out and we're gonna use the other half of this pork butt for another video that's coming up right behind this one. Perfect. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, one more. So there we go. What I'm going to do is vacuum pack probably two of these per pack and then uh, put these back in the freezer that are still rock hard. And there is your blade bone if you're wondering right there. So these are blade bone pork steaks. 
All right, so I have some pig feet that I've had in the freezer for, I know, six months. And the thing I noticed when I got them is they have not been split. And I want to do like pickles pig feet at some point or, or whatever, you know. But the thing is, I don't need them whole like this. So I'm going to go ahead and split these. Now, these are frozen together. They're rock card. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this side and flip it over and do this side. So let's go ahead and see how it works out here. Perfect. See that? There's one half. There's the other half. Now let's come in here and do this side. By the way, there is a tool here that can help you push these through without risking getting your fingers in there, just like that. I do recommend you use that wherever you're able or wherever you think you need it. So all of this is ready to be vacuum sealed, put back in the freezer. This we're gonna let thaw out in preparation for my next video. All right, so let's see how much shavings and all we got just from that little bit. And as you can see, quite a bit. There's that tray I was telling you about. It doesn't get it all. If you'll look up your sides and across here, all that's gotta come off, obviously, cause it will rot and begin to stink. And so you wanna get all that off and disinfect it. And we'll take care of that here in just a little bit. So it's a perfect little saw if you're an outdoorsman and like to deer hunt and like to process your own meat. I know a lot of people take it and just put it off on the butcher and let them handle all that for a cost. But if you enjoy doing it yourself, man, this is perfect. This is perfect. That's the reason I wanted it. I used to raise hogs and I know an old man that built a bandsaw and he would loan it to me every year when it was time to butcher our hogs. And man, you can just fly through it. You can butcher a whole hog out in no time at all. Now that was a much bigger saw. It stood up at the right height and all that. But for something you're going to use once a year, this is easy to store once you get it cleaned up. And by the way, cleaning requires water, soap, a brush. You do got to take the saw blade off and it looks completely sealed. So we're going to try just to hose most of it off, then take some soapy water, hot water and everything and disinfect it real well. But, uh, Something to think about if you're interested. I'll have links in the description box. I'm Russ Jones with Smoky Riz Barbecue.